Hi guys, it's Kat. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this miniature modern container home using a pre-made dollhouse kit. While you can build this beautiful kit as designed by the manufacturer, I love putting my own spin on these kits so they feel custom made. This design allows the second floor to attach and detach for easier access to the first floor. I can show you pictures of this house all day long, but let's jump right into the tutorial. First things first, let's break open this kit and check out what we have to work with. Everything comes well packaged inside this box in separate Ziploc bags. These first two bags contain all the pieces we'll need to build a house. We'll get to them in a second. Then there's this adorable tool kit with a ruler, razor, tweezers, scissors, and a screwdriver. And then there are these two mystery boxes and all this paperwork. Lastly, we have the MDF panel for the base and a bunch of acrylic sheets for our display case. Oh, there's also this last mystery box. There, that's everything. Let's take a quick look at the paperwork. The instruction booklet is printed in color and lists out all the supplies and directions for how to build the pieces. The rest of the paper are huge sheets of color printed images for the wallpaper and decor. Let's check out what's in those little mystery boxes. The first one contains a little music box. The second one has a yellow convertible. And this third one has a little red convertible. I don't think I'll be using these for this project, but I'll definitely save them for a future build. Time to dig into those two big Ziploc bags. The first one is labeled letter A. This smaller bag contains the pieces for the living room. The second bag is for outdoor furniture. The third is for the master bedroom. This one has all the exterior container pieces for the teal, red, and yellow containers. This last bag contains all the pieces for the kids' bedroom. The second big Ziploc bag is labeled letter B. The first smaller baggie has all the exterior container pieces for the red, white, and blue containers. We have all the pieces for a second living room, but we'll use it for an office. This one contains all the pieces for a guest bedroom, but we'll combine it with the master bedroom. This one contains all the pieces for exterior patio furniture and plants. This last baggie contains all the pieces for the kitchen. Alright, let's get started with the build. Lay your MDF panel down horizontally and grab the red, white, and blue container pieces. Put the blue container together first without the ceiling. I'm just using ordinary wood glue to hold these pieces together. Then take the bottom and side white pieces and glue them 2.5 inches further back than the blue. Then glue the bottom and side pieces of the red container next to the white, making sure it lines up with the blue one. This is the basic layout for the floor plan. It kind of looks like a Tetris shape. Before we lay down the wooden floors, let's first paint the walls. I use white for a clean look. While the first layer of paint is drying, glue this entire structure onto the MDF panel. For the floors, I take some thin coffee stirrers and lay them down horizontally on all the floors. Stagger the floorboards a few inches for a more realistic look. At this point, I pulled the red sidewall off because I needed to cut a doorway. Mistakes happen, but luckily many mistakes are not too difficult to fix. I measure two vertical lines. The left one is 2 inches from the edge, and the right one is 1 and a half inches from the edge. I take my X-Acto knife and run it down that line several times. Once you score it deep enough, you can break the wood right off. Save the middle piece for later. We just needed two side pieces for now. Before we add that wall back up, let's finish the flooring. Add the two side walls in place. When the glue is dry, take a few more coffee stirrers and add them to the top edge of the walls. This will provide a base for the second floor to sit on. Paint it white so it looks like crown molding. There is a window in most of the small baggies so take them out. I paint them black for a more industrial look. Add one to the front of the right and left containers. Add one to the back of the left container. With most of the structure complete, let's work on the backyard patio. I cut a half inch section from the extra blue piece and glue it to the back of the blue container. Then cut out the brown tile image from the pattern template and use Mod Podge to glue it down on top of the blue piece and the rest of the patio area. Now let's add some detail to make the containers look like actual shipping containers. You need a bunch of quarter inch thick coffee stirrers. Score each side and break off the round ends. Cut lengths the same height as the container and glue them vertically against the exterior walls. I leave a tiny gap between each one. 
Then mix some black paint with a tiny drop of white to create a dark gray color. Paint that all over the exterior walls. Grab the side piece from the teal container and break off a 3 inch piece. Cut a bunch of those coffee stirrers the same height and glue them on vertically. I'll paint these a dark brown for a wood stain look. Once that's dry, paint the other side white. This piece will close off the opening on the left container. For some structural support, I painted coffee stirrer white and glued it between the original wall and this new add-on. Paint a few more coffee stirrers gray and use it to cover up all the raw edges. We'll be using this technique a lot. Take this big white window we didn't paint and add it to the back by the patio. For the front, we need to custom make a window. For the frame, I'll be using three coffee stirrers stacked together for thickness. I cut two 3 inch lengths and two 2 and a half inch lengths. Form them together into a rectangle with the wood glue. Cut another length 2 and a quarter inches long and add it inside the rectangle. Paint this entire frame with black acrylic paint. Then just place it on the front right container. Next up is the second floor. Take out all the structural pieces from bag letter E. We have a mustard color container, a teal one that we stole a piece from, and another red container. The first thing I do is add on the side wall with the long one on the right and the shorter one on the left. This final red piece is meant to be the roof, but we'll save that for later. Take the bottom teal piece and add it to the left side of the red container 2.5 inches for the back. Just like we did on the first floor, add on your coffee stirrers for the look of hardwood floors. Once that's done, grab all your mustard pieces. Add the side wall to the right hand side. Then paint the interior of the wall white. Add a few layers for opacity. Also paint the back half of the mustard color side white. Install hardwood flooring to this container as well. Now just add the mustard container next to the teal one. Remember the red piece from the bottom container that we saved? Take it and add it to the back of the mustard container. From these oddly shaped container pieces, cut a 3 quarters of an inch length from the clean sides. With two of these, add one to the bottom of the right container. This will frame out the window area. Add two more to the left side of the mustard container. Let's get the wallpaper up in the kids room. Grab the color printed template and cut out the pink and white strip wallpaper. I use Mod Podge to adhere all the wallpaper on. Also wallpaper this extra square of MDF panel and add it to the back of the bedroom. Let's close off this room. Add a window to the back and another one to the front. For a balcony, take this final pre-cut piece and put it upside down in front of the front window. For a stained wood look, we'll first add these thick coffee stirs all along the side of the balcony. Add a few to the floor of the balcony as well. I used that dark brown acrylic paint for the stain color. I love how this is turning out. We'll add on the railing later. For now, let's finish the exteriors of the containers. The mustard color container will have the same dark gray look as the container right below it. Add coffee stirs vertically along all the exterior walls. Once all the sides are covered, paint them the same dark gray color that we mixed earlier. Paint a single coffee stir dark gray and use it to cover up any bare areas. Do the same for any interior white areas. Let's seal off the back of this room. Take the remaining teal color piece and add it to the right back opening of the middle container. To make my life easier, I painted the bare side white first. As usual, cover up any bare areas with painted coffee stirs. For the remaining open side, we'll create a window. Just like we did for the downstairs, I stack coffee stirs together for thickness. Cut out three lengths. Two lengths should be the same width as the opening, and the other length should be the same as the height of the opening. Cut out one final piece the same width as the other two and glue it to the middle of the frame. Paint this entire window frame black and position it in place. I paint one last coffee stir black and add it to the top window to close off the upper gap. The structure of the second floor is all complete. Let's flip this entire floor upside down and paint the ceiling of the first floor. I cover this entire area up with a few layers of white acrylic paint. Once that's dry, you can stack it onto the first floor. To help ensure that the two floors fit like a puzzle, we'll need to make some guardrails. I take some thick coffee stirs and paint them a dark brown. Add them to all the areas where the two floors meet. Make sure to only glue the guardrails to the bottom first floor container. This will allow us to remove the second floor easily. 
filling any gaps you have with more wood, and brace the back window. Add a guard rail to the back as well. This metal container is meant to have a wood look all around, so let's cover up the remaining white exterior walls with more coffee stirrers. The left container is meant to have a dark gray steel look, the middle one has a distressed wooden look, and the red container will have a concrete look. For that, paint the remaining red and blue containers a light gray color. Clean up any rough edges with more painted coffee stirrers. With the main structure all complete, let's move on to the fun part of decorating the rooms. First up is the kid's bedroom. Take the color printed template and cut out all the square images of these cute animals. Glue them on the pink walls for a pop of cuteness. Now we can move on to the furniture. Take the Ziploc bag with all the colorful pieces and spill them out. The first piece of furniture is the kid's bunk bed. You'll need these pieces here. Assemble the headboard and backboard with these two yellow pieces and four white sticks. Once that's dry, add on the longer white sticks for the bed rails. Glue on the footboard. Then add on these shorter white pieces for the top bunk's guard rail. Add the two yellow pieces to attach the guard rail to the rest of the bed. The last piece we need is a ladder. The kit was supposed to come with three yellow pieces for the steps, but I was missing those. So I decided to paint a coffee stir yellow and cut out three three quarters of an inch pieces. Glue each one along one ladder side then add on the other ladder side. Attach the ladder to the rest of the bed. For the mattresses, take this color printed template and cut out these two shapes. Fold along the guide lines to create this flat rectangular shape. You'll need two of these for the bunk bed. For the fabric, grab this adorable blue sheet. With some no-sew fabric glue, glue each rectangle on the back of some fabric. Cut it in half and glue the fabric along the mattress edges. Cut off the excess fabric from all the corners. Then fold over the remaining fabric. Take this light blue sheet with the white dots and cut it lengthwise in half. Fold over the edges so they don't fray and glue them down. Wrap one across each mattress. Then all you need to do is put the mattresses onto the bunk bed. Before we put the bed into the bedroom, let's create a few more accessories. Spill out the colorful Ziploc bag that came inside this one. I organize the pieces based on what objects they belong to. These cute organizer boxes are so easy to put together. Glue them onto this image from the color printed template sheet. Then simply glue it onto the wall. These tiny birdhouses are even easier to assemble. I add them next to the boxes. Next up is the kitty slide. You'll need these pieces and this yellow foam from the fabric bag. First assemble all the white pieces together into this shape. Add the yellow wooden pieces to the steps at the back. Take the yellow foam sheet and glue it to the front slide part in a curved shape. Cut off any excess foam. Lastly, just glue on the blue sides. How cute is this little slide? The last accessory we need for the bedroom is a train set. For that, you need these colorful pieces. Simply take these puzzle shaped pieces and add glue to the shallow grooves. Add on these short red dowels for the train wheels. Add a flat rectangular piece on the other side to act as the train's roof. For the connected train set, I add a piece of thread across all the train cards first. Then add on the wheels, the roof, and the chimney. This little train set is all done. I love these adorable accessories. Place the bunk bed on the back wall. Add a little rectangle rug from the fabric bag the slide on top of it, and this little train set next to the slide. Before we move on to the next room, add a painted coffee stirrer to frame out the top of the window. 
The room right next to the kids' bedroom is an art studio. Take bag letter B for those pieces. Spill out all the contents. For the painting easel, you'll need these brown pieces. For the painting itself, you'll need this wooden bare block. From the color image template, cut out this painting of a seaport. Use Mod Podge to glue the painting onto the wood. Also use it to seal in the sides. Grab the shorter brown stick and glue it to the bottom of the painting. For the easel itself, take the stick and glue at an angle to the easel front. Then simply glue this painting piece to the front of the easel. For the stool, simply grab these two circle pieces and this short round dowel. Glue them together and paint the dowel to match the rest of the seat. This little artist set is all done. Place it in the back room in front of the big window. To decorate the blank wall in this room, cut out these paintings from the template sheet. I glue them in a grid across the blank white wall. The rest of the pieces in the Ziploc are for the downstairs living room, so let's move on to that. The first piece we need for the living room is a shelf unit. The shelves are easily assembled by simply locking these cutouts together in a tic-tac-toe shape. Then add on the solid rectangles around all four sides. I add this to the right back wall of the living room. Next up is a couch. You'll need these wooden blocks. Let me show you how these blocks will form a couch. Just the main structure and two cushions. To repose the couch, grab the baggie with the fabric pieces. You'll need this big brown canvas and a smaller white canvas. Let's start with the brown one first. Glue all the wooden blocks except for the two cushion ones to the brown fabric. Cut off the excess fabric and wrap around the bare side. I like to cut slits into the corners for a cleaner look. Once all the structural pieces are covered, we can assemble it. The cushions are very similar except we need to add a piece of felt under the fabric for some more cushioning. First glue the blocks onto the felt. Cut off any excess felt. Add two extra squares on top for some extra cushioning. Wrap it in the brown fabric. Add the two cushions onto your couch and it's nearly done. Take these little metal beads from the same fabric bag and glue one to each of the bottom corners. This gives the couch a bit of height and a more modern look. For some couch pillows, take the white canvas and fold over a one inch strip. Glue or sew that in place. Cut off the excess fabric. Cut it in half so you have two cushions. Sew or glue one side up and flip it inside out. Take the stuffing from the fabric bag and fill up your little couch pillow. Close up the open side with some fabric glue. Plop them onto your couch. It looks super comfy. For a bit of art in the living room, cut out these three poster images. I glue them right above the couch. Next up is a coffee table. You'll need these pieces. The coffee table stand is very easy to assemble and looks very modern. However, I wasn't a big fan of this rounded tabletop, so I'm not going to use it. Instead, I grabbed this extra rectangular piece of bare wood and stain it a dark brown. Add this to the coffee table stand and it's all complete. Right across from the couch is a fireplace. From the same Ziploc bag, grab this mustard color piece that's meant to be a doorway. I cut off the doorway half so I'm left with the rectangle. Paint this white on one side. While that dries, cut out this fireplace image from the template sheet. Add the image round right to the wood for a modern fireplace. Glue this to the wall across from the couch. I'm personally a big fan of plants, so I placed this little pot and this plastic greenery together for an indoor plant. The back room on this first floor will be an office, so let's make a desk. These are the pieces for the desktop and the legs. Simply glue one leg to each side. The kit also comes with this big X for decor. I glue it straight onto the back of the desk. Because this looks very short, I take a few extra white legs from the kit and add it to the bottom of each leg. Now you can add your desk to the back room by the window. My favorite room of any dollhouse is the kitchen, so let's work on that next. Take the Ziploc bag letter C and spill out all the contents. The smaller bag has paper and some wires. The rest of the Ziploc contains all the wooden pieces you need for the furniture. 
I pick out the pieces we need for the dining table and the three dining chairs. Just like we did for the coffee table, I first stain the tabletop a dark brown. Assemble the farmhouse legs and place the tabletop on it. Place the dining table right by the front window. Let's move on to the dining chairs. I'll show you how to make one. First glue the U-shaped legs onto either side of the seat base. Then glue the R-shaped piece of wood to the center of the round chair back. Once these are dry, simply glue the chair back to the chair seat. You can place these on either side of the dining table, and I chose to go with the one closest to the door. We'll create a custom bench for the other side. If you're wondering what I did with the third dining chair, I'm using it as an office chair in the back room. Let's complete the rest of the kitchen layout. The main piece we need for the kitchen is the stove top and cabinets. The cabinet fronts are formed with these four rectangles that have a cutout in the center. I paint the biggest one silver for the look of an oven. Then glue on the solid rectangles for the cabinet sides. Take the color printed template sheet and cut out these cabinet backgrounds. I don't like this floral design, so I used a plain white back instead. Cut a piece of silver foil and stick it to the back of the oven. The countertop is a bit too dark for my taste, so I first paint it completely white. This hole in the countertop is for the sink, so let's make that. Cut out this template and glue it to the back of the silver foil sheet. Cut out the image along all the lines. I first score against those lines. Then fold this image backwards to create the stainless steel sink. Glue this to the bottom of the countertop. Then you can place this entire countertop on top of the cabinets. For the stove, I cut out a part of the wardrobe image. This is such a simple shortcut. Place this entire cabinet against the back wall of the kitchen. For a vent, take these two wooden pieces and glue them together. I paint it completely silver and glue it to the wall above the stove. Add a tiny wooden piece on top of the counter for the look of a cutting board. Now let's build a custom bench we talked about earlier. These are some scraps I didn't end up using in the kit. Cut the two thin dowels in half to make four legs. Then glue one leg to each of the four corners. I place it on the right side of the dining table. The kit also comes with these pieces for a microwave, so I decided to assemble it according to the instructions. However, I really didn't like the way it looked on the wall, so I decided to put it next to the cabinet for the look of a wine fridge. Then I place this greenery inside a bee and put it right on top. Lastly, add a little clear bead for the look of a garbage can. Before we move on to the master bedroom upstairs, let's add a few finishing touches to the living room next door. Grab one of the many rectangular frames from the kit and paint it a dark brown. Glue it to some foil paper and you have a simple mirror. Add it to the living room next to the couch. To create a side table, I repurposed the pieces for a nightstand. They're practically the same thing anyway. I paint all the blue areas white and place that under the mirror. Add a tiny plant on top. The kit didn't come with a front door, but every house needs one. For that, I take this square sheet of bare wood from the kitchen Ziploc bag, glue four of the rectangular frames on it. I add a coffee stirrer to the center to make it look like two doors. Then paint the entire front and back white. This piece fits perfectly in the front opening of the living room. To hold it in place, I glue a square dowel painted black right next to it. Make sure not to add any glue to the door. We want it to be removable for easier access. Okay, now it's finally time for the master bedroom. I take bag letter C and spell out all the contents for the bedroom. These are the pieces you need for the bed. Glue one of the rectangular lengths to the top of the headboard. Glue the other three lengths together to form a bracket shape. Glue that to the headboard and your bed frame is complete. For the mattress, cut out this image from the template sheet. Fold it against the guidelines to form this rectangular box. To upholster it, I'll be using this yellow fabric and this piece of white felt. Glue the box to the felt with fabric glue and cut off the excess. Then cover the entire piece with yellow fabric. Simply place the mattress onto the bed frame and the bed is all done. I add this to the center of the master bedroom, leaving it a bit closer to the right. Because it's a master, we also need a bit of space for the bathroom. For a divider, grab these seven pieces. This is very easy to assemble following the instructions in a booklet. Add it to the left side of the bed, making sure there's enough room for a shower behind it. To make the shower, you need these four wooden pieces. You also need these tile images. 
Cover up all the wood with the tile wallpaper. Glue the rectangle sides together first, then add the pizza slices to the top and bottom. Grab a sheet of clear plastic and glue it around the shower for the look of a shower door. Add the shower to the back corner of this room. There's not much color here, so let's add a bit of greenery. I take a white planter bee and add in this plastic greenery. For a bit more color, glue these pink little paper flowers to the leaves. Add this to the top of the cabinet divider. Another pop of color to this room will be the bath mat. Take the teal fabric from the fabric bag and cut it down to fit in front of the shower. For some lighting, create a lamp. First, glue these two pieces together to create the lamp post. For the lamp shade, cut out this image from the template sheet and glue it to any fabric you like. Cut off the excess fabric and roll the sides together. It's a bit difficult to glue the lampshade to the lamp post, so I first add this extra planter bead to the top of the lamp post. This gives a base for the lampshade to sit on top of. I add it right next to the bed. The last and final piece we need for the master is the toilet. Luckily, the kit comes with a super cute plastic toilet. All we need to do is add it to the corner in front of the shower. Add a garbage pail and this room is all complete. The interiors of all these rooms are complete and I love how beautiful it looks. The second floor is removable so you can see every single room. The next step is optional but great for a finishing touch. We'll use the remaining structural pieces for the containers as a roof. It also helps keep the dust out of your dollhouse. For a seamless look, I paint them the same color as the container it goes on top of. The left container gets a dark gray roof, the red container gets a concrete gray roof, and the center container gets a wooden one. I use the same technique of adding coffee stirrers and staining it brown. Make sure to cover up any bare areas with coffee stirrers. Last but not least, it's time to move outdoors. From bag letter E, take out the smaller baggie inside of it. Spill out all the contents. Grab the stick with the notches in it and paint it black. This will be the base for your stairs. Attach the steps into those notches. Then glue the biggest white rectangle at the top for a landing. For the railing, take this piece and paint it black. Glue that to the top of the steps. Then position the staircase in the backyard right behind the office and art studio. For the landscaping, I decided to go with a simple concrete look to add to the modern industrial theme. Paint a light gray across all the MDF. Don't worry about getting all the corners perfect because we'll fix that later. For the pool, the kit comes with these wooden pieces. Assemble all the sticks into two rectangles and glue the image to the bare sheet of wood. Paint the wooden frames gray. Place a thicker gray frame on top of the image, add a thin sheet of clear plastic on top, and add a final gray frame to the top of that. While that dries, let's build this pool chair. Simply add on the front leg, the armrest, and the back piece. Paint it a dark brown. Let's move back to the front. Cut out a piece from the scrap container wall and paint it the same color as the ground. I glue this in front of the front door for a bit of character. Then add coffee stirrers all around the edges of the container to clean up any messy painted areas. You can also do this with some greenery. The kit comes with these sheets of fake grass. I cut out some curved shapes and glue them around the edges of the house. Add a few bushy plants on top of the grass for a more realistic look. For some lawn furniture, spill out the second outdoor baggie and grab all the black pieces. Also cut out this image from the template sheet and glue this brown burlap fabric on top of it. This will create one table and two chairs. For the tabletop, glue the circle piece on top of some thin clear plastic and cut off the excess. I use a strip of painter's tape to help me assemble the legs together. Add a drop of wood glue to the center and wait for it to dry. Then add a table onto the legs. For the chairs, first cut out the burlap glue to the template. Glue the rectangle fabric piece to the seat. Then glue on the side armrests that double as legs. Add the second fabric piece to the back at a slight angle. Then add the final horseshoe shape to connect the seat back and the armrest. This little patio set looks way better than I thought it would.
All right, we're right at the end of this build. Let's add a finishing touches. We first need railings for the front and back porches. I take this thick acrylic sheet and score at the 1 inch mark. After scoring it on both sides, this acrylic is easy to snap. Then break the acrylic into 3 quarters of an inch widths. For the railing posts, I take these short square dowels and paint them black. Sandwich the acrylic in between the posts. Then slide the railing into place. In the backyard, add the acrylic sheet and the post to the back porch on top of the staircase landing. Touch up any paint for a cleaner look. Finally, and optionally, these are the pieces for an outdoor lamppost. The kit comes with wires and bolts for working lights, but it also looks great without it. I place it on the right side of the house. And that's the final piece. This modern container house is all complete. I love customizing dollhouse kits and I hope this video gave you ideas for how to design your own. I hope you guys liked this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye.